Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about regenerative braking, which is where an electric vehicle slows down by using its motor as a generator, putting energy back into its battery. Now, if you want to learn more about how that works and how you can install it on your electric bicycle, I recommend you check out my original video, and I'll post a link to that up here. But uh, if you want to learn more about real-world examples, keep watching this video because after I made that video and I posted it on uh, Endless Sphere, which is the largest electric bicycle forum on the internet, it created this lively discussion and I asked a lot of people that were you know, talking about this topic to share their electric bicycles and their experiences and their data with regenerative braking on their own rides. So now I want to share that with you. Now first, let me get my lame e-bike out of the way. Now first of all, I showed you my daily driver e-bike, which is back here with the two um, geared motors down here, but I don't use that one with regenerative braking because it has those geared motors, which don't work as easily. So I'll show you the bike that I had before this one that actually had a direct drive motor that made regenerative braking very easy. So this is the bike that I used a couple years ago and I installed regenerative braking on it. It used this nine continent direct drive rear hub motor and I only ever got about 4 to 5 percent of regenerative braking on it, which means I increased my range by about 4 to 5 percent by using that regenerative braking. Now that's not an amazing return, 4 to 5 percent, but it is fairly standard in the world of e-bike regenerative braking for a number of reasons that I listed in my last video, but basically just because most e-bikes are lower power and lower weight, so you're not returning a whole lot of energy back into the battery just because you don't have a lot of momentum on most e-bikes. But let's look at some other examples that actually do uh, a lot better than I do. Now this is Wayne's e-bike from Australia. He's running a powerful Crystallite rear motor there with a 40 amp controller from Green Technologies, and he gets between five to 8% regen returns, which is better than I get. One thing he noted though, and, and this is important, is that after 24,000 kilometers, the regen has actually caused the axles on his motor to um, sort of eat away at his torque arms due to the constant back and forth twisting that regen causes. So this is something you wanna keep in mind if you're using regen, especially on a really powerful motor like Wayne has here. Always check your axle nuts and your torque arms and make sure everything looks good. Now here's Alexander's bike from Serbia. He's got an impressive 11 kilowatts coming from these two direct drive hub motors. That's more power than I've ever ridden on an e-bike. And as he describes it, engaging his regenerative brakes, it's like dropping an anchor. So check out this video of him stopping with just regen braking and even locking up the tires while he's doing it. Now here's Hadrian's cargo e-bike from Germany, which he apparently keeps fully loaded with beer. That is awesome. Anyways, he gets between 12 to 16% regen, meaning he can go between 12 to 16% further than his battery normally allows him thanks to his regen brakes. That's actually amazing in the world of regen braking on e-bikes. But Hadrian brought up something that I actually forgot to mention in my original video, and I'm really glad that he did. Because as Adrian puts it, his cargo bike eats brake pads like he eats pancakes on Sunday morning. <laughs> Now, with regen braking, he doesn't have to go in and replace his brake pads all the time, which saves both time and money because those regen brakes will engage long before the brake pads will. Now, this is John's bike from Thailand, and he has a 3000 watt MXUS V2 motor and a KT 45 amp sine wave controller with a KT LCD6 display that has five user definable levels of braking assistance. John normally uses level three, which he says gives good braking from higher speeds without being too strong. He's not sure exactly how much energy he's recovering in terms of percentage, but he says that it really saves on brake pad wear, just like on Adrian's bike. Next up, we have David from Canada, who has this awesome looking recumbent trike with dual grin technology motors and phase runner controllers. He gets back three to 5% regen, which is similar to my level, but again, he says it's all about saving brake pads. Now here's Aaron's bike, which has an MXUS 3T turbo with internal and external cooling fins an 18 FET sine wave 10 kilowatt controller running at 93 volts hot off the charger and gets about 6% regen returns when used on steep roads. Aaron said he loves using the regen down those long steep hills and with the anti-lockup features and the functionality down to about four miles an hour, it makes it much safer on those wet, muddy and mossy roads than using traditional mechanical brakes that could easily lock up. Now you'll remember in my last video that I said that you can mostly only do regenerative braking with big direct drive motors and not mid drive motors or these little geared motors like I have in this bike without doing some modifications. But fortunately, you guys came through and sent me some uh, samples and examples of those types of modifications that can be done. So now I'd like to share those with you. First of all, here's Simon's bike from the UK. Simon uses a Mac motor, which is a pretty powerful geared motor, 
but he removed the clutch, which means that it doesn't freewheel in the forward position anymore when you're coasting. That allows him to engage regen braking, and he can reportedly achieve up to 11% regen. Now here's something really different. Now you guys know Bruno's electric bike channel here on YouTube, right? If not, you should definitely go subscribe because he's got some awesome videos over there. But if you are a subscriber, you probably remember his recent video on Danny Ripperton's crazy powerful 210 kilowatt electric Yamaha R1 racing bike. Now this bike uses two double stator motors, which is effectively like four motors set up in a mid-drive configuration, hard connected to the rear wheel, like in a standard motorcycle setup. This allows him to use regenerative braking in a mid-drive setup, which is incredibly powerful. And in fact, he doesn't even use mechanical brakes in the rear. He only uses regenerative braking for rear wheel braking. Now check out this demonstration he sent me, where first we can see how the wheel decelerates just by rolling to a stop. And then here how it decelerates when he engages regenerative braking. That's really impressive. And now here's another example, but on something that's a little closer to the normal e-bike powers that we're used to. I'll let Bruno from the Electric Bike Channel show you guys how regenerative braking works on the LMX bike that has a mid-drive motor. Yeah, Micah, I'm gonna show the regen in this LMX bike, right? So it's a mid-drive, but yeah, there's no free wheel here, you see. The chain is connected directly to the motor shaft, man. <laughs> so you can actually stop this bike and do a proper uh, regen like a, a direct drive motor. Oh, man. So I'm gonna show here. So those are the regen settings here, right? So see, regen set to 20%, which is the most powerful here. And yeah, regen enabled. Just gonna finalize here. Boom! So we can actually play with the motor. Huh. So you see here, see, it's already. Regen is already enabled. See, he's stopping the wheel. <laughs> so much power with the regen. Ooh. So I just disabled the regen and check the difference, man. Come on, man. I like regen. All right, thanks Bruno for showing us how regenerative braking works on your LMX bike, which actually has a mid-drive motors uh, whose pinion gear is connected directly to the rear wheel without any free wheel or cassette in between. So you've got that direct connection allowing you to do regenerative braking. Now I hope that sheds some light on how regenerative braking works in the real world on different electric bicycles of all different shapes, sizes, and power levels. Thank you to everyone who contributed by sending in um, you know, pictures and videos of your bikes and telling me about what you have on your rides. And last but not least, you guys know what time it is. It is time for the weekly ebikeschool.com book giveaway, where I will give one random lucky commenter the chance to win uh, either my first book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my second book, DIY Lithium Batteries, How to Build Your Own Battery Packs. And now the randomly chosen commenter from last week's video is, drum roll please, Jeremy Vandersloog. So uh, congratulations, Jeremy. Send me a private message here on YouTube with your uh, mailing address. Let me know which book you want and where to send it. And for anyone who wants a chance to win one of these books yourself, you can just simply put a comment on this video, say anything you want. And uh, next week, I will choose one of the random commenters to win a book. And if you don't want to wait, you can also find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week.